Are you thinking about becoming a mortgage broker owner? Well, I'm Aaron Wilson, CEO of My Mortgage Trainer, and as a nationwide trainer for those that are looking to enter the mortgage loan origination business, as well as you know, a nationwide provider of CE to mortgage professionals, you might imagine I get lots of different questions, but this one question is a topic that deserves more discussion. So to cover this topic, I've invited a special guest to help me cover it, that is, uh, quite often a question that I get, which is how do I start my own mortgage broker shop? My guest today is Chris Love, and he is a mortgage broker company owner from Love Mortgage, headquartered in, is it Abilene, Texas, Chris? Abilene, Texas. So, awesome. Chris, how are you doing today? No, I'm doing great. It is, you know, challenging, but it's always great to be in the mortgage business. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Boy, that is well said at this particular time. Um, well, thanks for coming on the channel today to discuss this topic with me and provide some perspective when it comes to this question. You know, uh, Chris, you and your wife have been longtime supporters of my mortgage trainer for our pre-licensing and CE courses, as well as compliance. Um, can you give me, and I'm just going to throw this right at you, man. Can you give me kind of a, 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 first of all, a quick rundown of your journey into the mortgage business, you know, that eventually led you to owning your own mortgage broker business? Sure. So uh, I started in 1992. My wife got it in 1985. I think she was about five years old then, but you know, uh, <laughs> and we worked as retail loan officers and, and branch managers and, and vice presidents in the retail side. Uh, my last gig was with Countrywide and they had me come over and I was an outside loan officer, outside sales, it was a great gig, but within six months, they changed the parameters of that position three times. And at the, the last time they changed, it, like, I can't even make any money doing this. So my wife and I, we really just kind of got tired of being at the whim of someone that is higher up on the corporate ladder, making decisions where they've never originated a loan. So we're like, we need to take control of our own future and be able to make our own decisions. And so right now, just to give you an example, it's great. I used to have to send in memos for advertising. I want to do this because of this, and here's the expense. And it'd go up the chain of command. And usually by the time it came back to you, the event was over and you missed it. But now it's my wife and I, someone approaches with, with something and I say, hey, do you want to do this? this again? Yes, okay, done deal. We write the check and, and we're in. And so just having that control of my future and my time is, is huge for me. You know, it reminds me, uh, you know, obviously when companies get really big, they become lumbering dinosaurs, right? Yes. And, you know, you're right to get anything done, you know, in those types of environments, you know, sometimes you really miss those opportunities in the marketplace. So you make a good point there. Um, so in, in my experience, Chris, there, there are two types of MLOs that I do business with nationwide. Um, one is that LLO, the MLO that wants to work for somebody else, right? And, you know, that company then can provide them with, you know, the security that they need. Maybe they're providing leads for them. They're doing the marketing. They've got benefits. Maybe there's a retirement plan of some sort. But they just want to focus on originating loans and let somebody else handle the rest. Yeah. And the second type of person is the MLO that has more of an entrepreneurial spirit, right? They really want to work for themselves, you know, like you, when you made that decision to make that switch over. And um, so... Today, what I want to focus on is that second person, you know, especially with the shift in the current mortgage market, because this is a topic that's been on the rise. You know, I, I think you, a lot of times I see that, you know, there, there's a time in probably every MLO's career where they consider this, right, where um, I've heard this called an entrepreneurial seizure. Have you ever heard that term before? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like that moment when you just wake up and you think to yourself, you know what? I think I can do this on my own, right? And, and, you know, that being said, my experience is that some of these people can do quite well on their own, like yourself, and other people soon find out that, you know, owning your own shop is, it's not just originating loans. I mean, you're the business owner, you know, you're the account, you're the marketer, you're everything, you're the janitor sometimes in that case, right? You have all these additional tasks on your plate. So in other words, being self-employed, it, it's definitely not for everyone, but I do get a lot of inquiries from the MLOs about this, on what it would take to open up their own broker shop. So that's why I asked you on here today, Chris, because I thought, you know what, what if I just asked a mortgage broker owner to take part in this 
that way it's not just me throwing stuff at them. You know, why not have somebody that really has this experience and is going through this and has gone through this, uh, some questions. And so I really appreciate you coming on today to do this with me because, you know, this, your time is valuable. Well, absolutely. Well, so I agree totally with you. There's those MLOs that they just want to work for someone. They don't want all that stress. I've got a good friend. She's a branch manager here in town. She's done quite well. But not too long ago, she said, well, you figured out years ago how to do this on your own and make more money. She said, I wish I'd have figured that out. So she's done well and she is happy. But there is some of that looking back and saying, what if I would have? Right. And, you know, opening up your own business in the early 90s was hard. But once we hit the 2000s and the information was available, it became much easier to be compliant. It became much easier to be your own marketing person, your secondary marketing. Uh, all those things I used to depend on someone at home office to do, I could do myself. Now, it is more work, yes, but now I get paid for it. Yeah, about that. So I want to just jump right into this, you know, because, you know, honestly, most people are going to want to know this particular question. What are some of the challenges that you faced? when you decided to start your own mortgage broker shop? Oh man, well, not knowing what we didn't know was the biggest challenge. So, you know, as loan officers, we know how to get the loan from our desk to underwriting to closing, but what about those pieces in between? So when you first start out, it's like obtaining credit, you know, so you're, you're applying with investors to sign you up and they want to know who your other investors are and how, what's your loan volume. And it's like, well, I don't have any, Oh, well, wait, we're not, well, we'll wait till you get someone else. So we opened up in April of 2001 and I had loans going and I didn't have anyone signed up and I'm sending loans to a company that I'm not even signed up with yet. And I didn't get paid until they fully approved me and they didn't fully approve me until I had several loans in their pipeline. But that was a scary deal because I never considered that. I was like, oh yeah, you do need investors and they're not just ready to jump on it. Right. So that was that was one. And then when in the state of Texas, when you're opening your first year, you get a knock on your door from the state. Hey, here's your first audit. <laughs> yeah, that was, you know, that was interesting. That was interesting. Yeah, I can only imagine. But, and we'll talk know, I would about say, that topic as well, because I think that's one thing. If I could just interject for a second. I think that that's one thing that I see when I talk to new business owners where they are very misinformed or not prepared, right? Like they haven't thought about, wait a minute, I have to have policies and procedures in place. What are you talking about? You know? So uh, I'm glad you bring that up. Um, well, and I think some of the retail loan officers are a little scared because they've got home office that are supplying those policies and procedures. And the key is your policies and procedures have to fit the scope and size of your business. So if they're working for a big bank, those policies and procedures are extremely detailed and you can get lost in those details but when you open up your own shop i was very careful to write my policies and procedures where i didn't hang myself out to dry right uh, but it is a lot of reading the code of federal regulations and drilling down through several different layers to find out what you need but it's pretty neat when an auditor comes in and they ask you about your anti-money laundering policy and they review it and they ask some questions and you say well for the scope and size of my business and they're like oh yeah Right. So, you know, it, it's work, but I think the loan officer that's wanting to open their own business is intimidated that the compliance is too big a piece of puzzle for them to, to hang on to and, and to take care of. But it can be done. And that's that's kind of what Linda and I have been doing for other people. That's awesome. What about like um, the financial part of it? So like um, I want to start my own mortgage brokerage and I've done pretty well as a mortgage broker. Uh, I'm sorry, an individual MLO. Um, like, can you comment on, like, what kind of money should I have in the bank, you know, uh, as far as like getting started, you know? I mean, there's bonding, there's the licensing costs, you might have to pay somebody to help you with the licensing portion of it itself, you know, uh, policies and procedures. Uh, can you comment on that at all? Well, so, you know, and when we did this in 2001, it's a little bit different than, the, than it is now, but yeah. Uh, and if, so we had to take the test and, and pay the fees for that and pay the fee of the state of Texas. So Texas has a mortgage broker program that 
when we renew our uh, license every year, it goes into a bond recovery fund. So I don't have to be bonded. The state covers that. But you're looking at E&O insurance. How much do I have to have? What should I have? And the funny thing is, if you ever read an E&O policy, it doesn't cover you for mistakes and neglect. And I'm like, that's errors and omissions. <laughs> but, uh, so I would not advise doing it like we did it, but at the time it's what we had to do. So we put everything on a credit card and we had a little bit of money set aside. And, you know, and I mentioned that we had, an, we didn't have an investor and we're sending loans to, we were open three months before we got our first check off a loan. So you need to have some reserves. You need to have, you know, I would say you better have three to four months cash reserves for your personal. Uh, as far as the office setup, this is, this is one of those things you control your overhead. So banks and mortgage companies are real big about blowing everything up. But if you're on your own, uh, Lynn and I opened up in a single room office, $200 a month rent, and we had phones and a copier. And if I closed two loans that month, we made money. Yeah. Awesome. So let's fast forward to today. You know, what are some of the challenges that um, you face in, uh, today as a mortgage broker? Well, you know, fortunately we're in, we're in a town that's 120, the county's maybe 150, 175,000. We've been here a long time. When we opened, we could open Texas Midwest mortgage or whatever, but with a last name like love, people remember that. So that's why it's love and love mortgage. But it, it is, you know, you're fighting the big boys on the block. Uh, and how do you do that? And you, you've got to understand you've got a niche. And so if your niche is you want to do a huge volume of loans, then you're not going to offer a lot of personal service. So uh, we run commercials, advertising on TV, and our tagline is big enough to meet your needs, small enough to know your name. Right. And I have so many people that are like, man, I've seen your commercial. Yeah, big enough. To, and, and they tell me the tagline. So the competition is, are you going to compete with a Wells Fargo? If they want the rate, if they want the loan, they're going to get it. But those people are not going to get the personal service that you have. And uh, I almost look at it sometimes I'm like a mortgage counselor. You know, I'm pre-qualifying someone and, and how, how much do I qualify for? Well, you can go up to 350000 but now your budget is strained. You need to stay 250 you know, and it depends on your market what 250 will buy, but around here 250 will buy a pretty nice house. And then you have margins. So I feel myself counseling particularly younger people. And then they go tell their parents, and it's amazing how many times we get a call, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm looking for a loan. You helped a friend of mine, or my mom and dad said you helped them. And uh, I've even got referrals from people that I've told, you don't need to get a mortgage right now. You need to get your stuff together and, and do these things and take a year and set yourself up like that. And they appreciate the honesty, and then they refer me friends. You know, most loan officers say, whoa, you just, you just took a sale away. Not really. I treated the person the way they should be treated. They appreciate it. And I'll get five or six loans based on that interaction. So, you know, you can't be all things to all people. Decide what you want to be and be that to the best of your ability. Good advice. Good advice. What you're doing is building relationships there, right? You know? Absolutely. And building trust, you know, um, sometimes it makes sense to do that, right? Put them in the right track. They'll trust that advice and come back to you later. So what are some of the benefits of owning your own mortgage broker business, would you say? Well, so, you know, you have a value system and it depends on what is most valuable to you, but basically it's usually going to be time, money, uh, and control of your decisions. And so, you know, those, those things, as we've gone through life, those balances change, but, you know, several years ago, I've been to more eighth grade girls basketball games in the middle of the day, watching my daughters play basketball in a town 90 miles away. I never had to call at my production manager. I didn't have to log in and say, oh, take this out of my sick leave or my vacation time. I've got the freedom to do that. Uh, and then on the money side, you know, when I got in the business in 92, they were paying mortgage loan originators 50 basis points on a loan. And you had to crank out a ton of loans to make any money. Uh, you know, I can run two and a half percent on a yield and I'm very competitive with any of my competitors here in town. And then if someone reaches out and they really want to get a loan, I have the option. I can skinny that back. I have, I have that control. And there's times I can say, I want that loan or I don't want that loan. Right. 
Right. So that control. And then we've talked again about decisions. Someone approaches you about, hey, you want to sponsor an event? You want to do this? You want your signage out here? Um, it's a quick conversation between my wife and I. Yes, no, take care of it, or we don't take care of it. But you're not depending on someone, again, that's never been a loan originator right. making that call for you. Right. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. So um, have you ever considered going back to work for someone else? No, no. Now, in all honesty, it's still the mortgage business. There are still tough days. And sometimes you're like, why am I doing this? But, you know, uh, every month we get our books and our numbers together and we look down and it's like, you know, and we closed 2 million that month. I know what I would have made when I was a retail loan officer. I know what I'm making now. I know what I can write off on my taxes. Uh, yeah, it's hard work. And like you said earlier, there are some things added. You're the marketing guy. You know, you've got to do the bookkeeping. You got to do all this other stuff, you know, and take out the trash, whatever. Um, I'm paid pretty well to be a janitor. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll be self-employed until I shut the doors. Good, good. You know, the, the mortgage industry, the housing industry, mortgage industry are going through a lot of, you know, challenges right now. Right. And, you know, you've been in this business a long time, just like I have, and we've seen it all. You know, we, we, we've seen, you know, we, we survived, if you will, 2008, you know, we're, we're what I like to call survivors. Uh, you know, we've seen markets that are more normalized. Uh, you go to 2020 and you go to 2021 and we're talking about record years. I mean, we had people that, all you really had to do is just show up, right, in order to close loans in those two years. And I talk to people today and it's like, you know, gosh, I mean, it feels like I fell off a cliff, you know, in 2022. And well, um, you did. You know? <laughs> that was the highest we've ever been in production. You literally fell off a cliff. So, um, you know, and what I'm seeing is, and the reason why I really wanted to pose this question to you and get your opinion on a couple of these things is like, okay, so if I came into the market in 2019 and started to learn the business and 2020 and 21 hit and I had record years, like amazing production, and now 2022 and on into 2023, uh, I'm having to work, you know, for it. But what I'm seeing is, I also have a lot of seasoned MLOs that are like, you know, here's the thing. I mean, if I'm going to close half the loans I was closing, I might as well make twice the money, right? And that's certainly a choice that we've seen why people are making this decision of like, hmm, does it make sense for me to go down this other route? Which is why I wanted to pose this question as it relates to should I become a mortgage broker, you know, a mortgage broker owner, if you will. Mm -hmm. So just kind of commenting on that, I mean, obviously with these industry changes over the last 20 plus years, uh, how has that affected you as far as owning your own mortgage business? So, you know, after the collapse, and, and I, I really consider the collapse from 07, because it started September 07 until 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what's really changed is all the compliance, and that's where you've been a big help. And, you know, I've taken your CE classes, and it, each one of your CE classes, you're like, hey, guys, this is the next big thing that we're seeing come along. So it keys me up. Oh, I need to look into that. Right. Uh, I've taken your uh, courses, your compliance courses, where I can print the certificate and I get an auditor to come in. When was the last time you did any education on your red flags? Oh, here you go. Oh, and what I've found is auditors are there to find something wrong. So you're never going to be perfect. But what they really like is they see you're making the effort. Right. And that's where you've helped me with those compliance courses. Is like, here's a certificate. Here's where I pass that. And here's, well, what about your anti-money line? What about red flags? What about, uh, you know, electronic, uh, being able to do business electronically? Here's my policies and here's where I've taken a course on. You know, and so, and that's huge. You've helped me tremendously. But the biggest challenges, yeah, it's compliance. I mean, we all know how to check the boxes and do a loan. Right. But what do you do when that auditor sitting across the desk from you? Right. You know, that's the biggest stress in, in my in my life is when I get that call from the state. Hey, uh, we're going to be there in 30 days for an audit. You're like, oh, even though you've got everything in place, 
your audit depends on that auditor and their viewpoints. Right. And, and it's like going to court. Can you make a stronger case for your policies than they can make against? So I would say anybody that's wanting to be a broker owner, there are places out there to help you with your policies, but you need to read them. You need to understand them. Right, right. Thank you for that. And the, the kind comments about our training. It's been a pleasure to be able to serve you guys over the years for sure. So, um, you know, trying to keep this, you know, short enough, compact enough that we can get some information in there, but also, you know, open it up for somebody to ask questions or things like that. Obviously, we'll give them the opportunity to reach out to you or I, but so what are the next steps for you and Linda at this point? Just curious. Well, it's, yeah, it's really interesting because our son-in-law came to us a couple of years back and he wanted to own his own business and questions and asking about that. And then he's like, well, hey, why, why don't I get in the mortgage business? And we were like, no, no. <laughs> uh, but he ended up coming to work for us and his idea was, you know what, why don't we get 10 branches going throughout the state and then we can build it up and sell it. And I'm like, because the cost of opening up 10 branches, where's the money coming from? Well. That's supposed to come from me, right? Right. And then we had the idea, you know what? We're in this business and we're helping the borrowers and it's really kind of a ministry. Yeah, you're closing loans, but you're helping people. And Linda and I said, what if we helped loan officers do what we do? Because at some point we're gonna retire and we're like, well, is that the end of it? And we got a lot of knowledge and we got a lot of experience and we can help people and we've trained loan officers. So we developed a franchise system that we're just starting to roll out where it's kind of broker in a box. Hey, you, you need compliance. Here's all your compliance and it's passed all the state audits. You need investors. I've already talked to my investors. Hey, as we sell franchises, will you take these people on? Yes. Cause they're going to be under love mortgage franchising. And we know that you're working with them to help them. They'll sign you up. That's awesome. And so, you know, I, I, I look at it this way. As a loan officer, you have someone come in and they're newly self-employed. They know their trade, but we can't do a loan for two years because we don't know, can you run a business? Do you know what your tax benefit, uh, your tax liability is going to be? Do you know what your insurance costs are and all that? Because, you know, those businesses fail in the first two years. And I asked Linda, what if when we started in 2001, if we'd had someone to take our hand, and say, I've been there, let me help you through the process. I said, what would you have paid for that? She goes, there's no amount of money right. that, that they could have charged. It wouldn't have been worth it. So that's the next step for us. You know, I'm, I'm pushing loans off to my loan officers, you know, hey, here, here's a loan that's 350,000, why don't you do that? Because I want to go fishing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I want to I go play some golf, I want to do some things. Uh, I want, to, I want to go fishing, but at the same time, I want to teach other people how to fish to feed themselves through this process, right? Correct. You know, that, it's kind of that old adage, you know, that, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, feed him for a lifetime. So, right. yeah, you can come work for a bank or you can work for me and I, yeah, you're going to be limited. But what if I teach you to run your own business where you can do it on your own? Right. That's good points. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys are heading that direction. I, I think that would help a lot of people for sure. All right, so um, again, for brevity's sake, we're gonna keep this video as short as we can, but I am gonna provide contact information for both Chris and I. Uh, if you check down in the, in the description below, the video description, you'll see both of our contact information if you wanna reach out to us. Uh, Chris, I wanna thank you. I do appreciate you coming on and answering some questions about this topic. And again, if you guys have additional questions, just reach out to one of us. Uh, if you're thinking about making that decision, you know, gosh, should I go it alone or not? Um, and again, lots to think about, you know, what are the state requirements? What's the licensing process look like? Where do I get written policies and procedures so I can make sure that I am compliant? You know, how do I get a surety bond? And, and just, just so many other topics that really that you need to be thinking about if you're going down this road. So, and one more thing, if you like this content and want more uh, mortgage market related content, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, we greatly appreciate it. And as always, if you have questions, we're here to help. That's what we're here for at My Mortgage Trainer. So feel free to reach out, reach out to yours truly, Uncle Aaron. Chris, thanks again for the time today. Appreciate your time, your expertise. And uh, anything else? Absolutely. You say? Anytime. Anytime. Glad to help. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm Uncle Aaron, CEO of My Mortgage Trainer, and I'm out.